Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wine Wednesday. Here we are once again. Uh, so happy that you guys are here joining me for another Wine Wednesday. This is going to be a really special one. Um, before we get going, uh, is the chat working? Is the chat working? Before we, we do anything, I just want to make sure that the chat is working. And if it isn't, I will... Uh, I will get it working by sending myself a uh, a super chat, right? Because <laughs> because that's what we did last time, and it started to work. So I think we're gonna just do it again, and and we'll make sure that we're all here and it's working before uh, you know anything else. Okay, great. <laughs> I'll tell you. We seem to be having so many issues with the Zoom to YouTube lately. Um, but it should be working now, guys. So say hi if you're here. <clears throat> I think we're working now. I think we are up and running uh, here on YouTube. OK, we're good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what the deal is with it, friends, but we are here. Um, and I'm super excited because uh, today we actually get to talk with the winemaker of our wine. So tonight we are drinking Duhigg wine, a Napa cab, and Harvest Duhigg is here to take us through a tasting, tell us about the history behind Duhigg and uh, some more goodies from up in Napa. So without further ado, I'm gonna go get her. She's in the waiting room. Well, we've, we've got a waiting room going on now, guys. Yeah, this is exciting. All right, let me go get her in the waiting room here on Zoom and she will come on in here. And there we go. Hello, Harvest. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We've got a waiting room Whoa. going on now. Guys. Whoa, that, I just got a little echo. Okay, here we go. Hi, Harvest. How you doing? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you. I know all the technical bugs that happen, but it allows us all to be together right now. So that's pretty awesome. It is. It is. It's really true. Um, I am. Uh, I'm super excited to have you here today. Um, so everyone, this is Harvest Duhig. She is the maker, grower, proprietress of Duhig Wine, welcome to Wine Wednesday. I I, uh, I can't wait to to have this and and just chat and and learn all about you and uh, and Duhig. So oh, hi. Oh, thank you, thank you so much for um for hosting me tonight, and um, I'm equally excited to share what it is that uh, we have been working on the last few years. Um, as you know, I think um, I've told you that we grow our own grapes, which means we bought a piece of land and we did all of the cultivation to plant a vineyard. And then for four years, we tended those young baby vines before they produced uh, their first crop. And so that journey is really a labor of love. And um, I'm a farm girl at heart. So it brings me great pleasure to be able to cultivate and grow and produce something that then we can all share and have our, you know, long lasting fun memories with. So it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good place to be. And in the heart of Napa Valley, we live in Coombsville, which is one of the 16 uh, Appalachians. It's the newest Appalachian. Right. Um, and it's a very unique and distinct, distinct area. Is, is that okay. So you get the map back there. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Currently we are Right. Okay. So like if the whole map of Napa Valley was the profile of my face, we're sitting kind of just below my nose, right about here is Coombsville right here. Okay. Nathan Coombs to okay, right about here. Okay. And cool. so with that, this, where this puts us kind of in um, relative space is we're at kind of the Southeastern end of Napa Valley. And that gives us a little more maritime influence. So we get that bay that rolls in with fog in and out every day. We, we tend, whereas maybe up Valley, St. Helena might burn off around seven. We might hang out in the fog till nine, nine thirty. So we have a little more moisture. It's a little cooler, but the really magical thing about um, our vineyard and our ranch 
we sit on the edge of this old uh, volcanic caldera. And so it's very uh, well drained. We get a little, we're a little bit higher in elevation. Our soils are a little thinner, less rich. So the Cabernet really works hard to um, produce these really small vines that have ultimately really concentrated fruit, which is every grower and winemaker's dream to That's work with. Nice. That's pretty amazing. Vol volcanic. I mean, see, this is the stuff that it just blows my <laughs> mind about wine and 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 the history of the land <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, that you're growing the, the vines on. I mean, that's it's going back. To me, to me, that's the that's where all the good stuff starts, right? Is like the site, the site, the site. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have the conditions that um, are a little more challenging, let's say, so things that you know, have a slope and aspect and uh, the soils are well dra draining, which means there's probably a lot of rock, things like that really make for interesting, unique places to grow Cabernet in Napa Valley. And we have one of the most diverse places in the world, like 52 yep. different soil series. So I think that's why Napa can still be anybody's uh, dream, you know, where they can come here and, and carve out what it is they think is expressive to them specifically because there's so much diversity in geology and maritime influence and, you know, east side, west side, um, whether it's the oak woodlands or the forest. I mean, you have so many representations of things you can do here that make farming really interesting still. I love it. I love it. Okay. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta try some. So. Oh, sure. Yeah. Let's Heck do that. Yeah. Let's, Let's do, do it. Watch this. Ching. Ching. Cheers. There we go. Yeah. Ooh, look at this color. Wow. Whoa. Look at this color. <clears throat> this is a um. Oh wow. 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 Let me tell you. Wow. It's just sort of exploding out of the glass which is also really welcome news for me. <laughs> because, oh yeah, that's excellent. I'm oh glad. my gosh. Impactful. You, you can't, you have no idea how that makes me feel Whew. <laughs> that I can smell this the way that I am smelling it right now. Um, oh my. So Max, okay. this, is, this is our 2017, which is our second vintage. Second and vintage. Okay. It's been in the bottle. Um, it's been in the bottle about 14 yeah. months. Okay. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful. I'd like to call it, I call it kind of a, a bright magenta. Okay. Yeah. Because I am looking at this and you know, you, you, I don't know if you guys can see at home, but like, boy, that is a, just a gorgeous looking color. You get these like this purple kind of rim to it, but yeah, bright magenta. You're right. That is, that's stunning. Thank you. You know, we farm in a way that we try to um, produce small berries, loose clusters. So there's ample sunlight and that sunlight is important because it's ripening the skins and, and ripening the skins means that all that color is developing and the tannins are developing and all of that is important so that in the end, we have a really abundant, intense, um, you know, bouquet as well as a dark, rich color. Yeah. And then that supple, brooding, interesting, you know, profile on the palate that kind of builds and expands with flavor and tannin. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try this. Sound good? Go for it. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> my oh my. This ooh, that's a special one. Wow. You made this. <laughs> I, I I grew it and I made it. <laughs> you grew it. The, that's that <laughs> you see to me this is like so exciting because I'm actually talking to the person that <laughs> this, this, is your, this is your baby right here. Like this is, mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's stunning. Um, Thank you. I'm getting, uh, 
there's like a um it's really smooth i'm getting like a um, like blueberries a, a blueberry uh dark fruits obviously um but it it's it's a this is a di okay how did, how did you do it because this is a is 100% cap mm -hmm. but it it is it's 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 like how is it this smooth and um it's also like a cab that I think you could also kind of pair with anything. Like that's I don't sort of the, like, that's my that's my objective, really. I mean, the wine is going to make itself to a degree because of it, the location of where this this fruit right. is grown. And then in the cellar, I just try to bring it through fermentation uh, in a really long, slow, lots of macerations to get the most out of all of that grape that I can. Um, and barrel aging, it's not overwhelmingly put into new oak because I want that fresh fruit Cabernet character from this place to really shine through, but it's nuanced with oak and then aged um, you know, to, for a length of time. And, and I'm not fixed to any schedule or time frame. So literally just tasting when I think the wine tastes right to come out of barrel is when we rack and bottle it. And then again, it goes through a bottle aging time frame that um, isn't set to anybody's, you know, spe specific marketing schedule. I literally just pull bottles and decide like, wow, I think right now this wine is at its moment where it should be released. And I personally strive for making wines that are delicious upon release. I don't prescribe necessarily to the belief that like I'm going to buy a bottle of wine and in three or five years from now, I'm going to wait for that special moment in the future yeah. to pull the cork and enjoy it. And I, I would never buy a, you know, great dress and hold on to it for five years from now. So I can plan. <laughs> so for me, it's about the moment. It's about being in the moment. It's about enjoying it now because now is really the moment that we have. Yeah. So let's grab that bottle by the you know neck and pull that cork out and, and, and really enjoy the people you're with. Um, yeah, in the moments you have, it's so true. I mean, I mean, and like especially you know today, what we've just gone through in the last year, I think now more than ever, um, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Those kind mm -hmm. of experiences again. When I mean, uh, you know, when we're all able to to get together again, um, like this is the kind of wine I would want to share with people because it's yeah, it, this man, this is. I want to share it with people too. <laughs> how, yeah. How, um, some, some wines you do drink and you're like, oh yeah, that, that, that could, you know, that, that really does need a little bit longer. And it happens a lot, especially with cabs and, but this, no, this is, yeah. Drink it right now. Like, <laughs> um, yes. How do you, so like, I don't know what is what is a a, a a normal day for you look like because it's always mm. fascinating to me. So like, what take take me through a day a day in the life of of harvest? Oh geez, so I think every day is a little different, and that's what I think brings me the most joy is like having this really dynamic experience, which I'm very lucky to have. So, um, in addition to producing this small amount of of duhig, which you know is every year we're making a little bit more as our grow vineyard grows into its own mature. Uh, state. I also have a long-standing position um, as a winemaker and grower relations person for Canis Vineyards. And so there's a whole host of things that I get to do, which quality control in our vineyards from um, all of Napa Valley, which might mean at different times of the year. So like right now is we're, we're finishing up or growers are finishing up doing a lot of pruning. So I meet with all the um, growers or their vineyard managers. And we go over pruning samples to make sure that quality control, like everywhere we're at is all on the same, you know, level. Um, uh, personally in our own vineyard, we are finished pruning. Um, we like to prune early here because we're sort of in a later cooler area. So we want to get our pruning done as early as possible to give us the best opportunity for early bud break. 
Um, and we just finished our first pass mowing, which is seems kind of silly, right? Because I think most people think of mowing their lawn as mowing and it's like a chore that they don't look forward to. Yet like our first pass in the vineyard with a tractor is like, it, it, it's just beautiful because we planted this cover crop that has served so many purposes um, and to, to mow it the first time and to have all the birds swooping down into the vineyards to eat all the bugs and that smell of fresh cut grass is just like abundant everywhere. So yeah. um, today that might be a typical day. And then tomorrow I might be, you know, um, pulling barrel samples and working on the 2018 blend or um, sending things up to the lab to, to make sure that we're sort of our objectives data wise are being met. I mean, it's really every day is a journey. And yeah. some of the most fun things I get to do is like discovering new places. I really am always on uh, my toes scouting out um, places that I think might be really interesting for, for other vineyards to be planted too. So it's never a dull moment. Right. Never. I love that. But you know, it's interesting how it's interesting how I got here. People think one that I changed my name to harvest cause I'm in the wine business and I'm in Napa Valley and no, my given name is harvest. My mother was a Choctaw native American and she named me after the harvest moon, but my middle name is not moon. So <laughs> um, that's really yeah. cool. And, you know, honestly, um, early on in my years, like when I was a, a, a young girl, I'd always been pretty ambitious. I'd like to think like I had a paper route in elementary school. You know, I was like cruising my bike with all my, my little paper route. And I think I've always just been someone who wanted to do stuff. And so I when I got a little older, mm -hmm. I didn't know what that do stuff thing was. I wasn't certainly college bound um, in high school. I just, I mean, I knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know for what. And mm -hmm. um so I literally packed after graduating high school, the week after I graduated, I, I sold everything I owned, including my car and my dresser. And I packed a little bag and I went to Maui because I was like, I've got to sort myself out. I've got to figure out what I want to do. And I don't sure. have any answers. And so I swam in the ocean every day for several months. And one day I popped up out of the water because I was constantly asking myself when I was underwater, like, what do you want to do? What makes you happy? How, how do you want to feel? What is your, what, you know, what does your perfect life look like? And I kept coming back to your name is Harvest. You're from Napa Valley and you like growing things. Like I've always had a garden. And so I literally came up out of the water one day and I was like, I'm going to study viticulture. Yes, that is exactly what I want to do. Yeah. And I just started that path and you know, continued on, came back to Napa Valley, went to UC Davis, um, graduated with their dual, dual degree of viticulture and enology and started working for a small local winery. And my first harvest was 1997, mm -hmm. which was really exciting because I was running around vineyards and doing lab work and doing cellar work and dragging hoses and all that stuff. And I fell in love. I was just like, yes, this mm -hmm. is what I meant to do. So cool. And then go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, and that sort of that drive and that experience and all the vintages since sort of have evolved. Like we've always, my husband and I always wanted to own land. His family are the Duhigs and they have a rich history in Napa Valley dating back to settling here in like 1853. And they that's, were ranchers and they were farmers. That's what I was gonna say. Cause the Duhig name, I mean, if you, um, if any of you guys have, you know, driven in Napa Valley, you, you'll, you've probably been on the road, Duhigg Road. Is, mm -hmm, oh. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. So, so Duhigg um, Road, Duhigg Road used to be my husband's grand, um, great grandparents' driveway. Like their house was at the end of Duhigg Road in Las Amigas. And that was the only house that was out there, you know, because it was just hundreds of acres of ranch land at the time. Wow. It wasn't the Carneros that we know today. Wow. So. And that's going yeah, back. Yeah, really cool. Let's go back to 1853. Yeah. And so when we thought of when we when we, you know, started our own journey um, with our own little piece of land here in Kunzul, we thought there was just no better way to honor his family's legacy than to name our wine brand um, Duhig. And, you know, hopefully it gives our kids something to grow into as well. Yeah. The, I, if you look at the label here, guys, you can see. 1853. <laughs> That's great. And that. Uh, that's a, that's a beautiful label, really. Thank you. I mean, that, that just is. Do you think, um, so you, you, you are from Napa, mm -hmm. grew up in Napa, and, uh, and then you, you, you went to Hawaii, you went to Maui. Were you like, 
I always think this is interesting because, you know, I, 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 I just, you know, I moved to LA from New York and I knew nobody and uh, to, to follow my dreams. Do you think like you going to Maui, you, you just like needed to get out? Like was the wine thing, did, were you thinking in, in high school, I'm gonna work in wine or was it like, I gotta get out of here cause this all this wine stuff. I know I had nothing to do with wine at the time. I actually had spent a year working for an insurance agency. <laughs> And so I was like, I am not meant to sit in a building 24 seven. And I, so that's really why I went out because I was like, okay, this is something I know I don't want to do. So I need to figure out what it is I do want to do. And so finding that connection to like that purpose, that drive, that love was like, just, I just need to connect some dots, you know? Right. And that's, that experience definitely gave me the time and space to do so. And I met some of the most incredible people, most incredible strong women that I'm still friends with today that were just mermaids, you know, in Maui and Kihei that I, I've, I made friends with and they're amazing people. So good things always, you know, happen in your travels unexpectedly. Oh, totally. It's so true. Um, I mean, even before, even before I moved out to LA, I, I did, uh, I was doing a, a, children's musical I was in musical theater and we toured the entire country doing this little silly kid show but it was so I, I'm so like thankful for that because I got to I, I've been to like 40 something states because of that show and it uh I don't know, it really shaped me you get to see how mm -hmm. you know other people live it gives you a little a, a lot of perspective and mm -hmm. um I, after that, I was like, all right, I'm ready. Let's go. Let, like, let's do this. Um, and it's so important. I think, uh, you know, people, I think kind of, you, you're like done with school and you're like, I have to work immediately and do, especially here in America, you know, we, we get like, so we get a little tracked. We get a little, we yeah. get a little, uh, like this tunnel vision and we have to remember that, yeah, the world's a big, huge place. And that's one thing that I think is really, really cool about Napa. It is this amazing collection of, of traveling souls, you know, people from all over the world stop here sometimes as a visitor, sometimes as a, a resident, sometimes as a temporary resident. And everybody has these interesting walks of life, but in the end, the common thread is their passion for wine, their passion for growing and being a farmer. And they all want to come to this place to experience it firsthand. Mm -hmm. um, and not to mention, you know, the insanely amazing cuisine that goes along with all of these, uh, all of these uh, world, worldly shifts and not whatnot. So, you know, we're, it's a really cool place to be. So I'm happy to, I'm happy to stay in this beautiful place where that I call home. I love it. I mean, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I, I think you, you live in the dream <laughs> really, uh, you know, but I just, I, I mean, I just love talking to, you know, people that are passionate about whatever that might be. Um, and it's, it's just, you know, you can see it. You, I mean, you, you are a mermaid winemaker, basically that, that also, <laughs> someone said that in the chat here. <laughs> you can't How do they see, know you yeah you can't see the chat but <laughs> oh, alexa awesome. here said alexa here said yeah oh my gosh mermaid winemaker i love it yeah it's true um would you do you mind if it, it, it could you take a couple of questions uh sure from, i'm from, yeah from I'll, I'll field okay. i'll field some questions awesome uh so guys if you have any questions for harvest uh just type them in the chat uh i probably have missed some um i will have to i'm gonna scroll up and see if i missed any uh oh yeah here's one um okay look at this um this is from Alexa, and she wants to know, do you do less pruning of grape clusters to produce smaller grapes as well, or just the leaves? Mm. So Alexa, it, it kind of is seasonal and dependent. Um, I sort of try to precision farm so that water and nutrients don't, are just right and only produce a thin leaf layer. So if you overwater, you get a big 
push of leaves and then you're having to pull leaves, right? And it's the same thing with clusters. So as long as you are really paying attention to pushing your vines to a level of stress that makes them really work hard, you're going to limit that berry size. You're going to limit your cluster size and end up with kind of loose gangly clusters. And that's what we aim for. Now, there's some years where mother nature bestows upon us an excess amount of rain or an ample amount you know, of, of late season rain. So you can't control, you have less, you have less influence as a farmer. You just have to go with what my, mother nature gives you. And, um, sometimes like in that year, 2009 is like the last year I can think of that was really big. The crop was just huge. The berries just swelled up no matter what you did. And so in those years, yes, we go through by hand and we will cut off shoulders and trim off parts of a cluster to make sure that we are really getting all the sunlight that needs to hit those berries. So cool. Okay. Being, being hands-on, being hands-on in the process is really kind of what keeps me in the game. Like I just mm-hmm. love getting out and getting dirty. Like, uh, you know, I'm a jeans and boots kind of girl, um, day to day. It's, you know, there's definitely a romance with wine, but at the end of the day, you really, if you really want to get into it, you got to appreciate being dirty and sticky and I mean, covered in dust. And are you on the, are you, are you on the tractor? Out there. I, I do get on, I do get on the tractor from time to time, but I'm not the fastest. So like <laughs> tractor time for me is more like therapy. I stick my earbuds in, I listen to my playlist and I can just go to sunset, but it's more like during the day, I've got to get someone on that tractor that can get the job done <laughs> efficiently. <laughs> but, um, but you're out there and the, wait, you, so, wait, you soil right in back of you actually. Oh yeah, you yeah. want to see oh, wait, that? Wait, 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 show us this because I, 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 we, yeah, let me see. So this. this is an actual sample of the soil from my property. Is that a good lighting? Yeah. And um, this is what we call, I call it diatomaceous earth. So some people think that it's uh, something called tufa. Um, it looks like it might be clay, but it's not, it's actually diatoms and diatoms existed in a, you know, old eons and eons ago, um, sunken caldera that filled in as an inland marine. So diatoms are like actual sea, sea animals that die. And in here, when we've cracked these open, they're actually light and fracturable. And I don't know if you saw that little plume of dust, it's very light. So when this is till, like this was just fresh out of my, you know, with a shovel, but when this is tilled, it turns into just this very light, almost like moon dust. Um, so this stuff has very low nutrients and very low water holding capacity, which means grapevines have to work very hard to, um, thrive in this sort of dirt environment, which is really cool because that's, you know, that's kind of perfect for, for the style of Cabernet we're trying to make. Um, and this is predominantly what our Cabernet is planted on now. And then on the other hillside that we have, we have about four and a half more acres that we are, um, uh, waiting to plant. And mm. in that hillside, it's, it's South facing just as this block is, and it's beautiful, but the soil is a little different. So it has a little more texture and more rock. So it'll be really interesting to see wow. how these two blocks, when, when our future block gets planted, how they will, um, you know, kind of mature and what qualities they will exhibit. Cause they will be, I'm sure they'll be different. Right. That's wow. So right now, cause right now you have three acres, right? Three acres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're only making Duhigg wine from the grapes we grow ourselves at this property. Okay. Got it. So it's a very <laughs> small production. <clears throat> this is it. This That's is it. Th- this is it. Right. That's it. And we mainly are, um, you know, we sell wine, almost exclusively through our mailing list, um, which you access through our website. And then we have a little bit of wine uh, sold elsewhere that uh, you can get your hands on, so. Okay, and it's on, uh, let me, I'm gonna pop in the link for everybody in the chat. So you guys can have the link right here. There it is. Um, There it is right there. Doigwine.com, you got the link right there. Um, and uh, I saw a question here. Shauna asked, "Are there do you do you do um, do you do tastings or anything?" Mm, I don't because I don't have a retail space. Right. So 
You got it. You got to just, you, I know it's kind of a tough, it's a catch 22 when you're small and you're yeah. this, you know, a little tiny boutique producer right. um, that we don't have a retail space and you just got to go in. You got to go all in, Sean. You got to go all in and have that wine shipped to your door. I mean, yep, there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. Really so, is. hey, anybody, anybody who enjoys wine and really wants to see what a slice of Napa Valley is like, um, they can follow uh, Duhig Wine on Instagram. I am all about throwing up what I'm doing on a daily basis, whether it's, you know, uh, chasing my dogs around while we're, you know, sampling, pruning, mowing, um, yeah. checking water, holding capacities, uh, you know, looking at rocks, whatever it is, but we try to keep it lighthearted and, and really authentic to what we're doing on a daily basis. And so, um, you get to see the nitty gritty. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, uh as a, it's, guys, yeah. Do Hig wine on Instagram. Um, great, like a great follow too. Cause I, I always check your stories and you were out, there, <laughs> you were out there today. Yeah. I was out there today. Oh, I was stoked. I was stoked with the, the fresh smell of cut grass. I was like, yes. Oh, today is a beautiful day. Smell that <laughs> green as the eye can see. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh man um i gotta tell you um i know you can't see the chat but the uh the cheesy pop fam loves you so oh thank you cheesy pop fam um <laughs> hey what and you gotta you gotta tell me just a second about before we i know we're probably getting close to departure before you want to oh, <clears throat> um but um, have you been to Napa and are you coming soon? Um, I, gosh, I mean, I would love to, it's just, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I, well, I go to Napa. I've, I've been to Napa basically every year for like the last, oh gosh, like seven in a row, probably mm -hmm. except for, except for, uh, 2020. Well, it's I feel like, I feel like when the world, uh, you know, as long as every, when we're in a little bit better of a place, so maybe another couple of weeks or a month, everything out in, about Napa right now, as long as the weather's really nice, everything happens outdoors. Yeah. So it seems really good. If the yeah. sun is shining, we're outside. If the sun is shining, we're eating outside. If the sun is shining, we're drinking wine outside. So it's, it's I think it's, that's, that's a beautiful place to be. So I, I yeah, I mean, I can't wait to get back up. Um, <clears throat> is everything... What, what, as far as COVID and, and what, is everything open now? Is no, we, we, no, I mean, like, I think it's uh, outdoor only. So yes. we're still in the outdoor only space. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So if the weather's beautiful, it's been really nice. And so it's yeah. outdoor only and it's minimal, you know, the numbers are a lot lower as far as capacities, but it still feels really good to see people uh, being able to enjoy themselves in an outdoor environment, wherever they might be in Napa, whether it's in a, at a restaurant or at a retail space. I mean, at a winery. I, I, <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I miss Napa, uh, so much. Mm. Well, uh, we yeah. miss you too. Yeah. <laughs> it is we miss, we miss them. We miss our visit. We miss our people too. I'm sure you must have, it, 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 oh man, the, the last year must've been crazy. Like just, you know what? Every year gives us uh, presents us with a whole new set of challenges. And that's kind of what I like to look at it as is we have this life. That's all it is. It's life in front of us. And uh, we just don't know what's going to come. It depends on your perspective as to how you ingest it, how you, okay. you know, let it run through you and what you choose to do next. So I'd like to think that I'm a bunch more nimble than I've ever, you know, been in the past and more flexible and um, more patient. I think that's a, mm -hmm. that's a big one. Mm -hmm. So those aren't, those aren't, you know, too terrible things to pursue the future with. So it's true. In the meantime, in the meantime, in the meantime, the glasses, the glasses always half full. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I agree. And I'm glad it's half full with this. So mm. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, this was this was great, uh, guys. Uh, anything else right now? I can um, let me just see if there was anything else that I missed. Anything in the chat? 
and then we, you know, we can let you go. <laughs> but yeah, this has been so much fun, really. Harvest, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for hosting. I don't even remember. I think I reached out to you. So I'm really stoked that you were open to receiving a, a message and then, um, yeah. uh, you know, introducing each other. So now I have a new friend. Yeah, it's true. We, we yeah, I, I think we had, we had a mutual friend, uh, Amanda. And oh, yeah. yeah. And that's right. I, I don't, I don't remember how we got, I don't, I don't know, who knows, that's, that's the thing too with Napa is that the, the, the community, you just kind of know, like, random people, and then you, and everyone's just great, like, yeah, it's so, it works, that's what makes, that might make, that's what makes the world go round, so, yeah, everyone's thanks again for, great. yeah, thank you for having me, this has been great, I appreciate it, and um, I'm really excited to have introduced you to Doohig, yeah. and um, definitely, when the world opens back up, I would appreciate a touch and we'd love to show you the vineyard. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Cheesy Pop fans for enjoying uh, this glass of wine with us. Although you probably got to enjoy it a lot less, not having the wine in your glass, but <laughs> soon enough. Soon. soon I, enough. Hope, yeah. I hope, uh, I hope that uh, they do get to enjoy it. They're already talking about, I see them in the chat already talking about having the big Cheesy Pop party uh, there. So, you know, mm, you know, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> One day when the world, when we can all see each other again, it'll happen. It'll happen. Sounds good. <clears throat> um, guys, thanks. I will hang around here for a few more minutes. Harvest is going to go. Uh, but thank you again so much. It was great. Awesome. Till thanks. next time. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. Beautiful. This is beautiful stuff. Really. Um, I, I just, you know, one of the amazing things about our little Wine Wednesday show that we do is that we get to meet people uh, like Harvest. And <clears throat> I think it is really, you know, I, I think I see you guys loved her. So, <laughs> and, and I think that's one of the great things that's happened is that we get to meet these really interesting people that are uh, so passionate about, about what they do. You know, she's not out there in, 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 in the, in the, in the fields, in the soil, she's getting dirty to make this beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's great. It's real great. Mm. <clears throat> I gotta, I gotta read you guys this because I didn't even um, read the label here. But listen to what, listen to the, listen to the back of the label here. <clears throat> The ethos of our land guides the principles of our farming. Grow with intention, synchronicity of the season, and in congruity with nature. This lets the story of our vineyard reveal itself, resulting in berries that are light in hand and intense as wine. Settled in Napa 1853, fifth generation Napa Valley farmers. Proud growers and makers of estate grown Coombsville Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, and and I, I love it here. Picked October 4th, 2017. 125 cases made. Uh, pretty amazing. Um, just a, a, an amazing lady, right? Um, and, and the wine's amazing. Really. It's great stuff. It is, um, I gotta say, it is, it is like not your, it's a, it's a different kind of Napa cab. Uh, it is, it's a different kind of Napa cab. And I think that's what's really neat about it. Uh, and like she was saying, it's not a, um, <clears throat> It's, uh, you know, she doesn't, she likes to sip it and say, oh, taste it every day out of the barrel and say, oh, this is the day. Yeah, let's go. Um, 
it's not it doesn't have those those crazy oaky uh kind of napa cat things it's i'm just getting lots of that that um still blueberry and it, yeah it's Now, of course, I don't get everything because my, my, my sense of smell is still not back. My taste is, is, my taste is way more back than the smell. But I was able to smell this out of the um, glass in, in, instantly, which was really good. Um, Yeah, yes, Shauna. It's <clears throat> it's um it's a little you know when you say sweeter, it's not like you know the sweet as in like you know sweet like candy, but it's you know like Cabernet Sauvignon sweeter. It's just it's a it's a, li a little bit. It's just different. Yeah, very interesting. Really. Um, <clears throat> I, but, but I still wouldn't say it's like sweet. It just, it, 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 it's just, I think a cab that you, um, like I was saying when I first was trying it, I think it's, it's just a cab that you can uh, kind of eat with, it, it can kind of have with anything. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not <clears throat> I don't need to eat a giant steak with this you know it's kind of I can have whatever um mm -hmm. yeah blueberries blackberries cherries yeah She's great. I, 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 I think she's just fantastic. That was, that was so cool, wasn't it? <clears throat> so cool. So cool. And you're right, Jay Brown, you know, the world needs more women winemakers. It's, it's true. Um, and to, to get to um, talk to one right there, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, that's what it's all about. That was, man. I'll tell you what, guys. How great was that? How great was that? Uh, you love to see. You just love to see that um, because it's a person that 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 uh, you know went out there in the world and and pursued her her passion and and is rocking it. <laughs> She's, I mean, like really. She's just so cool, as you guys are saying. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really neat. Like, really neat. Yeah. Obsessed with... I know, Amanda. I saw you guys talking to me. Yeah, it, it's so true. I mean, she, because when she was saying how she just was like, I, I went to Maui and just swam with the mermaids for a few months to figure out what I want to do with my life. I was like, yeah. That's, see, yes, you, you get it. You get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What am I having for dinner, Zara? This is a great question. Because when I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, I got to eat steak tonight. Uh, but I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I could order anything. I, I honestly feel like I could order anything tonight and I'd be fine. Because this doesn't. I mean, I still might get steak, but but I, I this kind of goes with anything. I think as she was saying that she kind of wants to make wine like that, you know. Yeah, I guess I could I could I, I should open up my Postmates and and just kind of see you know what what I should order. I don't know, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or whatever's the fastest. I don't know because because I 
now I'm like, oh man, I better order something quick because I've already had, um, you know, a couple of these. So, uh, oh, do I see? Oh, I see everything. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. See, I made some really great chicken um, on Monday and I had that again yesterday. And I honestly could have eaten that today with this. Yeah. Like it, it, it would have gone pretty well. But I think I could, honestly, I think I could eat anything with this, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Like if you, if you served me chicken with this cab, I'd be totally fine with it. I would, you know how they say, like you got to have like white wine with fish or whatever. No, no, no. I would drink this with, with fish. Not a problem. Mm. Unbelievably, unbelievably smooth, this. Yeah, unbelievably smooth. Mm. Great stuff. Yeah, really great. I mean, I, I think that uh, it's a special wine, that, that, that's no doubt. Um, it's a, it's a really special one for sure. Um, but special, special lady, uh, world needs more people like her. That's, that's for sure. For sure. Love it. Can't wait to get up to Napa and see her. Cause, uh, you know, yeah, one day, one day guys, we're all going to get back up there and uh, get back out in the world again. It's true. Um, see, uh, 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 Alexa, you said uh, uh, lighter medium bodied reds are fine with fish. It's true. Cause I, I wouldn't say that this is like a Napa cab that, you know, you can, yeah, this is a Napa cab you, you could have with anything. Totally. Tiffany, you checked out the uh, Duig website? Oh yeah, it's gorgeous up there. Like gorgeous up there. Three acres of just beautiful, it's crazy. I love it. And you can see like her, her um, what's really neat about the website too, guys, if you go on it, there, there's a little like uh, timeline of the Duhigg uh, family history. So I would, I would definitely say, go check it out. Um, yeah. If you meet her, you might not come back. I mean, <laughs> uh, every time I go to Napa, honestly, I'm always like, should, like, should I really leave here? Should, like, should I? Because, because it, it, it's just, it's perfect. See, look at this, Amanda there. Moving away really does help you realize your dreams. I did the same thing, ran away to Australia for a year, 10 years later, I'm still here studying to be a conservation biologist. See, that's what it's about. Uh, that's what it is about. You, 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 yeah. Yep. All right, guys, um, we're gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna go eat dinner figure out what I want with this uh, delicious wine because it was gorgeous. Um, but before I do, I also, um, I want to talk to you guys because I need to, oh my gosh, this is weird timing. <laughs> Christina, hi, Christina. This is, okay. Um, okay. Amazing timing right here. So uh, Christina, uh, this is okay. Christina right here, Guglielmo is is from Guglielmo Wines, and we are going to be doing a a Wine Wednesday uh, in a couple weeks, March tenth. So what I want to know is from you guys: Would you like 
to do a tasting with me where we get to try two wines from Guglielmo Winery. She's right here. This is crazy. This is great. We love this. Um, I put together uh, two wines. I've already scheduled that we're going to do tasting um, with uh, with Christina. And we're going to do two wines and give you the opportunity to get the two wines before March 10th so that you can taste along with me and everyone over there. So if that sounds good to you guys, we will make that happen. Um, Zara, we already have a connection here. This is so good. I love this. <laughs> Um, and Tiffany, they're in your area. Oh my gosh. How about this? Okay. So, so, um, we're gonna, we're gonna do two wines from, uh, Guglielmo Winery. Uh, and we're gonna taste them together on March 10th. I like it. Uh, and we were, uh, Christina and I were also talking about possibly doing a charcuterie plate pairing or dessert pairing with our wines. And I can get you more info on that if you guys would be interested in doing a uh, charcuterie plate and dessert and the wines, but I'm just, I'm just throwing out a lot of ideas here, but for now, um, specifically, it seems like you guys are definitely interested in the, the wines for sure. Okay. So, um, all right, this is great. So this will be in a couple of weeks. Both. Okay. This is cool. Zara said, like Zara said both. Because we got a good, we got a, we got a good little, little Disney connection here too. <laughs> this is, this is the good, this is a really good thing um, about, about this. And you see the two wines that, that we'll be doing. Uh, and, and if we're doing the charcuterie and the, Here's the deal, the wine can be shipped anywhere, but if we're doing the charcuterie and the dessert, um, that's only a Southern California thing. So my SoCal people can take advantage of the, um, the food, but, the, but anyone can, can get the wines. So, all right. Okay. So here's a, so this will be for two weeks from now. I will have more info um, after I talk to Christina, but the, the, the wines anyone can get and our charcuterie and the, and the, uh, the dessert plates are a possibility for our SoCal fam from actual Disney, uh, from, from theme park chefs, from theme park chefs. There you go. Um, okay, that's good. All right, Christina, and I will talk more uh, about that because that's going to be two weeks from now. How about that? Two weeks from now, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a good time. Well, we have a good time every Wine Wednesday, but that'll be two weeks from now. I figured that if we give you guys enough time to get the wine, uh, yeah, that would make sense, right? So two weeks from now gives us time to get the wines to you guys and uh, yeah, we'll make it all happen in a couple of weeks. All right, cool. This is great. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, your interest in this, but I think there is. So this is great. I love getting to actually taste um, wines with you guys. I think that's a lot of fun. 
Um, Cause you know, get to taste along with us. I think it's, you know, even more of a party for uh, you guys at home. So, all right, cool. This is great. Cool. We love it. Um, so before I go, are there any more questions uh, that you guys have? Any more questions that you guys have? As far as two weeks from now, just hold off on anything until um, I give you guys a little announcement about that because I'll, I'll have uh, some more to say about that. So yeah, um, but anything else for tonight? I'm gonna go. I, I I'm gonna go pour some more of this. That was great. Yeah. That was good stuff. Let me tell you, that is real good stuff. That purple color, right? It's really something. Yeah, I love that purple color, and it's really really great. Oh, my mom said, "When will we toast together?" <laughs> I can't wait. Because that'll be the best toast of any toast that uh, I make. Because uh, it's my mom. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yes, uh, I, I'll... Uh, as far as two weeks from now, guys, I'll talk to Christina. We'll... we'll um, create a link so you guys have it uh uh you know an easy like kind of one click thing where you guys can get the wine so yeah be super easy cool we love it uh i think that's gonna do it i think that's gonna do it for uh tonight patreon people i'll see you on the after party uh on discord and uh a very special thanks to harvest from Duig. What a good night. Yeah, really, really good night. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cheers, everybody. Oh, I'll choose it. I choose you with the bottle. I choose it with the glass, too. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. We love it. Thanks, guys.